In this video, I'm going to show you a bunch of things you can do to triple or even quadruple your chances of being accepted by a curator on SubmitHub. And the reason why I think I can I can do this for you is because one, I've used it a bunch for my own music, more so in the past, but still a little bit now. I'm a curator on SubmitHub, so I'm on the other side of it and I know what I want. And I've interviewed the founder of SubmitHub, which I'll link to at the end of this video so you can see what he had to say in this matter. So um, first, I'm going to show you, I'm just going to walk through the submission process to give you a bit of tips on that side and then I'm gonna give you some bonus tips that I, I kind of like further things that require more work but they'll further improve your chances so let's just jump right in so if you're not familiar with submit hub it's a way to send your music to curators namely like playlists YouTube channels blogs stuff like that it's a very organized manner there's two types of credits there's premium and free specifically I'm going to use premium credits here because the chances of getting accepted are just so much higher and they can cost anywhere from a dollar to three dollars per submission. It's like roughly, it's a little bit less than a dollar per credit if you buy them in bulk, like a hundred for example. I think it's eighty dollars for a hundred credits. So I already have a song set up. I'm going to skip that part because it's, it's pretty basic. Basically, I'm going to choose premium credits. You're guaranteed responses within 48 hours or you get your money back. Your submissions get ahead of the free ones and people have to listen to 20 seconds of your song and if they reject it, they have to leave you at least 10 words feedback so um, we're gonna choose curators you can choose record labels if you're trying to get signed for either like a single or maybe even a longer term deal I don't do that but um, actually I've done it before and I have gotten pushed out by uh, one particular small record label for a couple singles so this part right here super important not just from my experience um, but from the actual founder of submit hub always choose it's quite important for you to get feedback um, basically that means no people can't copy and paste any feedback and they have to give you feedback. If you choose, I don't want feedback, they'll even recommend that you, you don't choose this option. Basically what happens is they don't have to even give you any feedback at all, which makes it a lot easier. On my side as a curator, when I'm, when I'm listening to a song and I have to re re write feedback to reject it, sometimes I talk myself into liking the song because if, if I, if I'm kind of on the fence, and I start typing and I might be like, well, I, I like the chorus and I like the production and the vocals was really good, but I didn't like, and I realized there wasn't anything I didn't like and maybe I was already in the fence so I ended up accepting it. So those kind of like iffy decisions are where you're gonna win if you make sure you choose the feedback option. And if you don't actually want the feedback, then just don't look at the feedback, but always choose it because literally you will triple your chances. It's 5% acceptance for 90 second option and like 14% chance acceptance for, uh, it's quite important. So make sure you always select that. Typically, I will let people um, have uh, monetization slash copyright. So if they want to put it on their YouTube channel, um, they can do that. Um, so keep that in mind. I always do that. And then we select some genres, um, which I just deal with later. So we click next. And this is the kind of the bulk of this video is going to be showing you how to analyze all this stuff here. Because a lot of data here, which you need to make sure that you use effectively, otherwise you're going to waste a good amount of money and a good amount of time. So first of all, make sure you get your genres down pat. Um, you can be a little bit liberal with this, but make sure you respect what the curator wants. For example, you don't want to go into the pop category um, and choose commercial and future based, because if you have multiple genres, like commercial could be anything, right? I, I specifically say on my curator account, don't send me country music, but sometimes people will send to me using the country and commercial and end up in my queue. And then I'm like, it's they wasted their credit because I'm never going to accept a country song. Um, so try to avoid generic things like commercial or auto-tune or stuff like that. It tends to not go well, at least in my experience. Now, you get to filter things here. And if you're focused on Spotify, you're probably going to be selecting has a Spotify playlist you're going to scroll down and you're going to turn off everything but Spotify playlisters. And that's fine. Personally, for, for my music, when I use uh, Submit Hub now, I tend to focus mostly on bloggers, uh, influencers, and YouTubers, and I turn off Spotify playlists. Um, but it kind of depends on what you want. Since I promote my music mostly using Facebook ads, that's where all my Spotify traffic comes from. I don't really care about getting on a playlist. Blogs tend to have a much longer term impact and also the people you get are much higher quality. You'll get less people, but they'll be higher quality. Um, YouTube channels can be hit or miss and influencers can also be hit or miss. So let's just assume you, you want Spotify though. Because a lot of people care about Spotify. So I'm gonna choose Spotify playlisters. 
has a Spotify playlist, and I'm going to hide people I've sent to, people have already responded, and there's different price brackets. So let, let me kind of kind of go through the actual description of each of these curators. So basically you have the name of the curator, you have what their main platform is, they're mainly a Spotify playlister, you get to see roughly how many submissions they've had, to a degree, and then you get genre match, quality, and influence. Genre match is specific to the genre future base. So this means they have a very good match for future base, which probably means they're a good person to send to. You can see their approval rate, which is also specific to the genre of future base. So you know, if you're going to submit to them, you have a 15.6% chance on average with premium credits to be accepted if you're actually future base. So that's very, very good to know. It's also good to know how many submissions they've received. If they've gotten very few, then that means they're probably new, which might mean your chances are, they might mean that chances are better, it might mean your chances are worse. You kind of need to evaluate it. You also see the response rate. If someone has a 100% response rate, um, that means they're pretty much always going to reply to your thing. If they don't, you get refunded, but if someone has a 10% response rate, that means even if you're on the fence, maybe if they just don't listen to your song, uh, you're just going to get your money back. So I tend to be a little bit more liberal um, with weight, like wasting credits on low approval ratings if their response rate is low, because chances are if they don't like it, they might just not listen to it or reject it at all. So always read this about section, because sometimes you'll see good things here <laughs> that can can really like ruin your day. Meaning um, this person says they want vocal led songs. So if you send them an instrumental track, you're probably going to get rejected. So you want to be sure you read that about section. Now, there's also these quick facts, which are also very important. Um, it tells you how long they listen on average, 50 seconds on average, which is actually decent. Um, quick to share approved songs, that means basically they share music on average less than a week kind of thing, usually faster than that. Um, has a lot of Spotify listeners, and you can confirm that by seeing what playlist they share to. They share to this playlist 95% of the time, and they get an average of 500 to 900 listeners on that playlist. I believe that is per month not per, per song. That's like average listeners for the playlist per month, um, which is pretty pretty solid, honestly. It says what they typically share as Spotify, and they tend to keep songs in the playlist for three weeks, which is also very good to know. Um, some people will keep songs on for two weeks. Some people will do a month. Um, when I'm doing songs, uh, some songs, if they're like high in the list, like top 10, I might do two weeks. And if they're lower in the list, like slot 50, I might do a month, and it also depends how much I like the song. If I really love the song, I might keep it on there for a month at slot 7, which is really good. But if I'm kind of on the fence, I might do slot 50 for three weeks. You know, if I, It kind of depends how much you love the song, how good it fits in this particular spot, but good thing to keep in mind and look for. It says how, much, how many songs in that genre they've approved and what other styles they like. So... Um, you might see some that says they've only approved like one future based song, and then maybe if they don't have other EDM genres, you might not want to target with them. And if I go to like a, a very low genre match, this person's only approved 10 future based songs in the last year. They're into like indie pop and experimental electronic. Like it's kind of a, it's less of a good fit, right? Even though they have a nine out of 10 genre match, they've only selected 10 future based songs in the last year. So, you know, you want to take all that data with a grain of salt, but you want to be conscious of it and actually read it. So when I'm going for this particular song, it's future base. So I have it shorter by genre match. For example, I'd probably submit to this playlist. Now you see this money symbol here. This means it costs two credits to submit to them. If you only want to submit to certain price brackets, you can turn off like three credit or two credit ones. Um, and that kind of determines who you're going to see in this list. I sometimes I turn it off and I'll go for a lot more one credit. Um, curators and other times I'll leave it on and I'll try to f be a little more speculative. I'll be do a little more analysis on each of these playlists. Like I'll actually open up their playlist and um, you know see what their growth rate is and I might actually click on the playlist and look at the songs, make sure they're a good match. Kind of depends on how much money you want to waste. Maybe not waste, but <laughs> how much money you're willing to risk versus uh, how much work you want to do up front. So they'd probably be a good fit. I'm a little loosey-goosey with my credits. I'd rather uh, spend more money and save time. Um, so I'd probably say that one's probably good. They get a high approval rate, which isn't always great. You don't want someone with a super high approval rate, um, but they probably just love Future Base. So 
this is good. They have a good amount of engagement in their playlists. Um, no restrictions. Recommended genres. They like Future Bass, and they have a decent approval chance, and their playlist, pretty low. 5 to 10 listeners on this one, 30 to 40 on that one. But it's only one credit, so I'm probably going to select that. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but in general, that's how I look at this data. And you should too, because this is kind of how you need to do it if you want to be a little more effective with how you use your credits. Because every song, you, every curator you submit to, you're paying money for. Um, so that's that part of it. Now next, when I go to submit, um, I'll delete this. You get a, a, the ability to pitch. So um, you, you're going to have your contact email here. This is my public email, so I'm not going to blur it out. Um, but this is how you're going to get notified of, of submissions. So you want to have the right email there that you can actually check. Now you get to provide a pitch. I recommend that you do do a pitch. And these are pretty good recommendations. If you have a substantial amount of clout on any given platform, use that to your advantage if you can. You might say something like, uh, future-based collaboration between two rising artists. Both artists will gladly share any coverage with their audiences, a combined total of over 25,000. That has a little bit of clout in it, and it mentions that we'll share any coverage, which gives people just a little bit of incentive. I'm not going to say it's going to necessarily improve your chances. I, like, I always read every pitch that I get, but it doesn't always impact. Like, if someone says, I have, like, 100,000 Instagram followers and I'll share... It's like, okay, great, but I really didn't like the song. But if I'm on the fence, it's like I like it. Maybe maybe there's five songs that I'm all on the fence about, but I'm probably going to accept, like, two of them. Maybe this is enough to push me over the edge. Like, you know, it's, it's kind of just the name of the game. Most curators focus on the music, but you have to admit that if someone is dangling this big fruit in front of you... Um, it's going to be like 1% little boost. So any clout you have, you, you got to take advantage of it. Just don't be like braggy or um, <laughs> don't be a jerk about it, right? Don't be like, I'm a superstar. I'm awesome. You know, um, use your clout, but use it lightly and maybe mention something cool. Now, there's something here that you need to take into account. If I went through that and I'd submit, that's the bulk way of doing it. And that alone, if you follow every little thing I mentioned along the way, will drastically improve your chances than just going into this with none of that information. Always use the feedback option and always like vet the, the, the streams they get, vet the approval rate, vet uh, how long it takes them to approve, how long they listen, like look at all that data. That will already triple or quadruple your chances. But if you want to get even further into this and be more cost effective, what you can do is do all of this one by one. What I mean is, Let's say you you go to this playlister, you look, you say, this is perfect. I like everything. They have a decent approval chance. They're into my genre. I'm going to go there, look at their playlist, open up their playlist, and I'm going to look at this. And here they have an Instagram account. So I'm going to go to their Instagram account. We're going to do a little bit of research work. And you see they got some pretty dope visuals. What do they talk about? They share songs. So in addition to the Spotify, they also... Sh maybe they're a record label, actually. Yeah, they are a record label. Um, so maybe you check out some of these artists. You know, you really go in and you do your research. If you have more time than money to waste, this is what you got to be prepared to do. So at this point, you know they're a record label and they have some artists. You've listened to those artists. you checked out their playlist. Now, when you go to submit to them, you can actually call them out by name. Um, and maybe, uh, maybe you found their real name or something. But what you could do is say, like... Um, hey, Adept, um, thanks for considering my song for your gaming music playlist. That's calling out their name and their gaming music playlist. I really like the artist you share there on your label. So this, this shows that you did research. Like, when someone submits a song to me, if they say, like, hey, Genera Studios, so, 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 I know they at least did some research. And that shows me that they, they care. And that, that matters to me. Now, if they go even further and say, hey, Andrew, I love the content you're putting on the YouTube, your YouTube channel, they did a lot more research than just like an average person submitting. So I'm much more likely to, I'm not going to say like approve them when I don't like their song, but if I have a choice between five songs that I all kind of like equally, and I don't want to, like, maybe I like them all, but I can't just accept them all because I don't want my approval rate to be super high. I don't want to saturate my playlist with smaller artists. 
So I, I'm only going to pick one. If I like them all equally and one person did their research, I'm probably going to be more likely to accept that artist. So keep all of that in mind. If you do all the stuff in this video, you're going to improve your chances dramatically and get better results on SubmitHub. Keep in mind, though, the average approval rate is still around 15%. So don't get your hopes up too high, but do everything that I show in this video. And if you want to see the whole thing, the whole chat I did with Jason from SubmitHub, you can check out this video right here. And if you want to learn more about Facebook ads, which in my opinion is the best way to promote your music, you can check out this playlist right under that one right there. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.